Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We got a special show to you, for you today about a very controversial, or at least a very heavily discussed subject in Hawaii right now, and that is corruption or the appear and the appearance of corruption in our political system. And we, you know, all of us have uh, a challenge by continuing to make sure that we feel uh, respected or we respect our institutions and all of a sudden this uh, happens right in the center uh, corruption seems to be going right to the center of our political system at the state legislature and uh, we were worried before because uh, we saw this happening in our various agencies so special guest today i got the father of think tank hawaii Jay Fidel with me. And I thought this would be a subject that, you know, he and I, who get a chance to talk to a whole cross section of people in Hawaii, ought to just kind of have a discussion about, about this issue. So welcome, Jay. How are you? Thank you, Sean. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's President's Day, and I couldn't think of a better person I want to jerk <laughs> away from his holiday. So here you are. And uh, we're going to do something interesting today. I'd like to say we, we uh, have a half an hour show and we, we have a break in the middle. And um, usually when uh, we do this, you, um, you know, I get to ask the questions and we get to hear from the guests. But I thought today, since Jay and I are sort of, you know, part of the institutional framework of uh, Think Techie more than myself, Nevertheless, we, we ought to have a chance to uh, play host to each other. So I think um, for the for one half, I'm going to do the questions. And for the second half, Jay, you're going to have a chance to, to do it. OK? OK. Uh, you want to start off or you want me to start off? How do we do this? This is going to be a new uh, a first at Think Tech uh, Hawaii. Um, I tell you what, why, you why don't you start off and, and then I'll respond and uh, then halfway down, uh, I'll, I'll ask you questions. Oh, terrific. Okay, Jay, you know, you know all about what happened in, in, at the state legislature. We, we had two, uh, uh, two legislators actually get uh, indicted and they look like they're going to plead guilty to, to bribery. Now, that's incident or well, those indictments followed the Kealoha case where we had a chief of police and uh, and a prosecutor end up being incarcerated for for their deeds it, we have these allegations of something happening with um, rapid transit and, and all the like but for years as far back as i can remember and when i was in the legislature i never thought I would ever see a day when somebody would admit that they took a bribe and uh, an actual bribe to do the legislative work. Right? And so here we are. And that's happened. That's the framework of what's happened. So my question to you is, <laughs> what are we going to, what, are we, what should we do about it? You know, uh, I, I, I don't know even where to start with it. In your mind, what do you think we need to do as a society to overcome the mistrust that all of this uh, just creates in the public mind. I'm going to go back. I want to go back to my, my own early days when I was just a young pup person here in the 60s, 70s practicing. <clears throat> I always felt that there was, it was not cash corruption. It was something else. It was uh, high school classmates corruption. That's different. You yeah. Know? Um, and then, you know, I had one case that was really quite remarkable where um, uh, the, uh, the judge was up for uh, reappointment and, it, and the lawyer on the other side of the case was uh, on the um, Judicial Selection Commission and um, the judge made a ruling that was really astounding. And um, I said, gee, I wonder if that has something to, fact, something to do with the fact that 
um, you know, this judge is about to be reappointed or not. And the fellow on the other side of the case was on that commission that would make that decision. <clears throat> and nobody recused himself, neither the judge nor the lawyer. But I, you know, in retrospect, probably they should have. But this isn't cash corruption. And, there, you know, there were a lot of, you know, like personal enmity, personal, mm, personal style, um, and to a certain extent, race style, you know, right. um, you know, that that entered into it. And actually, Think Tech did a whole series. Um, we call it the, um, the, the the series of the three digit lawyers, right, who were old enough to be under a thousand in their bar number, you know, and a lot of them local lawyers and transplant lawyers both got up there and said, you know, there was plenty of racism back then, you know. Yes, as a, there, there was, you know, in fact, I remember Wally Fujiyama ta uh, talking about the fact that um, that when the, when the judges were appointed in the territorial days uh, from the mainland, that the big five lawyers would actually almost win every case, you know, and the uh, if you're representing uh, the union or somebody else, you'd have a rough time. You know, the solution, though, that they seem to have come up with was to flip the system. You know, get judges that would uh, be more sympathetic to their point of view or get their classmates to be. And so it just, you know, it, it doesn't fix the situation. It just uh, evened it out. <laughs> So now everybody. You know, I mean, the whole thing was uh, you had to pay your dues. Now, what does that mean, pay your dues? If you paid your dues, you did better. But what does that mean? Does that mean you have to know you have to know the judge uh, with a legislator? Um, it, well, it means that familiarity counts. And that's not cash corruption. That's just what do you want to call it? Familiarity corruption. It shouldn't be taking place, but it does. Um, and I can cite various other situations where I, as a practicing lawyer, I suspected that was going on, but there was but bloody you, nothing you could do about it. Let me give you two cases, though, uh, and tell me what you think about this. Now, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lobbyist, right? I go to uh, my, my, I, I do all the things lobbyists should do, which is I provide information to my, to the legislator. I make contributions to him. I'm a supporter. Um, I want at least access to him so that I can I can tell him or her what my feelings are and what's important. And, and that's, you know, that, that's what happens. And um, at what point does a line get crossed? I, I mean, at what point? I mean, all I'm doing is my job. And, and uh, you know, and it might be cash involved in the sense that I bought tickets to a fundraiser. That's one person. Here's a constituent. Constituent goes out and holds signs every day and then realizes that there's a stop sign uh, in the street now that he uh, really wishes, or, or a street down where he really wishes there was a stop sign. And he goes to his legislature and he says, look, I hold signs for you hours. And you, you know, help me out. You're my guy. And uh, I want this, this, uh, I want this stop sign up. And the legislature looks at him and he knows that if he says no, he's lost the sign holder. So, and the other case, if he says no, he may lose a, a contribution. I mean, what's the distinction? That's really, I'm sure there's been a lot written about that, John. And, um, you know, my, my initial re reaction is, isn't that the way democracy works? Um, people lobby for candidates. They hold signs for candidates. They make they make contributions for candidates. Um, but there is a line out there, and clearly, yeah, you know, we, we know that what happened here recently, or at least what was found here, investigated here, that crossed the line. And so yeah, the question is, where is the line? Where is the line? It definitely crossed the line. We we used to. <laughs> I have. I'm guilty of using this in the speech where I'm talking to an audience of people and, tell, and telling them where else, but in a democracy, can you influence public policy by sign holding? You can go out there and hold signs and therefore you elect who you want in the legislature and you can do it. Um, I, you know, so there is a line, as you said, 
and and I guess that's really the question I'm leading up to. Have you got any sense of where that line is? Well, I I know what these guys did was over the line. I know what K. Aloha did was over the line. If it shocks the conscience, it's over the line. If it involves some um, cash uh, that that is treated as um, a secret payment, you know, it's over the line. At at one point, Kalani English uh, hid five thousand dollars under the floor mat in his car when when he was stopped at a traffic stop and there was a policeman nearby. He hit it. I mean, it's guilty knowledge. Um, so if you have a large amount of money involved and you're hiding it, and you don't report it and you act. You act on that in terms of your legislative duty, your voting, um, your action as a chair of a committee, all that. Um, that's clearly over the line. But what about, the hand, uh, what, uh, what about the, the situation where you've got a, a, a committee, a chairman? whose uh, wife may be employed in an agency, and the agency is um, essentially on notice that if anything happens to her uh, or him, if there was a husband, bad things would happen. I mean, where, where's this line? I, clearly, Kalani and uh, Tyler, who, by the way, I, I should say, I don't know that much about the case, and I'm actually quite saddened with it, because both of those gentlemen for 90% of what they've done in their careers were, you know, in my opinion, uh, did very good things for Hawaii and for their districts and, and, and that this happened. But, okay, so now we got this situation where there's no money being transferred directly, but there's money going into the family and the threat remains. Is that something that, uh, is that, where's that on, your, in, on the line? Oh, I mean, if you make me the trier of fact, the judge, the regulator on that, and I saw you know money going into one end of the family and the other end of the family is a legislator or a judge or some public official, um, I see that as you know, uh, attributable. There's attribution there, like, like in the tax law, no question. And I treat that as, as a violation of law, of, of the criminal law. Um, but I, on the other hand, you know, it seems to me that this isn't just a matter of catching these two guys now. Um, but by the way, my reading of the newspapers is that they were not charged with or they, they did not plead guilty to bribery per se. Bribery per se in the, in the federal system is, is a very serious felony. They pleaded guilty to some lesser offense like, I don't understand this offense. I never knew about this offense. It's called um, honest mail fraud. I don't know how mail fraud can be honest, but there you go, um, which is a lesser offense. And it tells you that they're getting some kind of deal. They, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're talking or singing as a case may be about others. So we haven't, you know, we haven't seen the end of this, uh, and their prosecution really, so far, tells us there's something else under the under the rock. No, well, in in any event, you know, it seems to me that where we have failed is not only in the investigation and prosecution side, which clearly we have failed, but also in the in the in the public spectacular side. Because if, if my wife gets money and I vote in a certain way, the press ought to be able to find out. Um, and if there's any public record of it, of any well, kind. you know, let's say I put it in the public, you put it in the public record. It's in the public record, but it's also the agency knows <laughs> that, you know, bad things could happen. I mean, it would depend on, on the personality, but another way, you know, I, I it, first of all, as, as I said, when, the, when those two cases occurred, I was actually saddened. And then kind of angry, but then on the other, you know, and then I thought about it and I said, you know, how you, there have been cases in the legislature where um, companies would, because it's a part time legislature, companies would hire somebody as uh, for nine months of the year and then let them go and, you know, essentially have them be a legislator for three months. But you can't sit around a company table without knowing what the company's position is on issues. Um, 
And I, I couldn't, and, and you know, outside of the fact that one was really sneaky and the other is uh, more accepted, what's, what's the difference ultimately? Well, the difference is if it if it if it sounds like a real, um, you know, FBI type felony, a federal felony, it sounds like something you would see in a late night movie <laughs> with secreted yeah. cash and the well, like. Well, that, that was that clearly crossed the line. But you yeah. know, in terms of influencing uh, public, uh, you know, uh, uh, influencing legislation or influencing public policy. I, you know, it's it's perfectly legitimate for the two examples that I gave you to occur, and yet I the result is the same as the person that took money and was hiding it under the uh, the mat, or it could be the same. Uh, so where's the ethics commission on this? I mean, if they have information that suggests there's a bad connection, if they have information that suggests that somebody is being influenced by, you know, attributed, attributed money or um, any kind of uh, inappropriate influence, um, then, then um, they can investigate, but they don't investigate. You know, John, it's like a sacred cow. You could say that they don't have time for that. But the fact is, if they investigated this and if they made public their findings, um, this would this would affect things and it would reduce the amount of this wink and blink type corruption that we have. Which uh, is which is, by the way, you know, one of the um, <laughs> one of the challenges of democracy is that if you if you if you make things public, then it self corrects, you know, and yet. But certain things, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Well, lawyers, you and I both are lawyers, and we have clients, and we have a fiduciary duty to our client. This is not, I'm not talking, and so we're talking ethics now. So, as a lawyer, I have a fiduciary duty to my client. I get elected to the legislature. I'm still a lawyer, and what happens? What happens when I get put in between my fiduciary duty to people who elected me and my fiduciary duty to my client? Who, um, what are we? That's a really good point. <clears throat> and you know, all be known that a lawyer who's licensed, who can practice law, you know, maybe during or after his time in the legislature, um, he should be um, he should be subject to discipline. Don't you think? Or she? Well, uh, uh, I think that these. I think that what we're seeing may be uh, more systemic than we as a society want to admit. I mean, it, it, the obvious would be friends looking out for friends, but we may actually have a system that ultimately would it would frown on on direct cash you know we just that is clearly over over the boundaries but it there is this whole gray area that uh that means that may be systemic maybe part of where we um, all are anyway, uh, you know, i think to some extent yeah we're gonna we're gonna cross the line now now i'm gonna ask you questions Okay. Yeah, so we're going to take a short. We're going to take a short uh, break so that I I like to give uh, Think Tech a chance to put on a commercial. So we're going to do a short break, and then uh, Jay, you you when we come back, uh, you got a chance to give me uh, put me on the go. Okay, thank you. Okay. Two major crises have descended upon humanity: climate change and the coronavirus. They may seem independent of each other. In fact, they are very closely linked. The emergence of COVID-19 on top of climate change is a spiraling crisis, and it's just the beginning. Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program comes on every other Monday, one o'clock, and we talk about a lot of different subjects, all of them law related in some way, either life or practice. And I try to have a diversity of guests that can talk about different 
topics of interest. So please join us. Think Tech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea program, every other Monday, one o'clock in the afternoon. Aloha. And today, at this half of the program, we got my guest host, Jay Fidel, and I become the guest. Okay, Jay, take it away. Okay, well, here's the thing, you know, you were governor during that period, and this is a period, at least, I think, you know, consistent with our discussion that in which the culture has changed. And right now it's at a low ebb. I think all the, all the uh, commentators would say that it's a low ebb. And these uh, crises with Kealoha and now these legislators and, uh, and, and city, city officials and all that, this is pretty serious. We got it all around. It's like having a, a virus all over your body. Um, and yes. of course, uh, you know, the commentators, including uh, Charles the Jew, wrote a, an opinion piece saying, we've got to rebuild public trust. This is pretty serious uh, that we don't we, we don't take this corruption seriously. We don't do anything about it. So, <clears throat> you know, what's happened over our lifetimes, John, uh, is that it has declined. It has turned from high school friends to cash. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I never saw it. I never saw it. I, I kept on thinking it was high school friends. I never saw it turn to cash. Um, did you see it turn to cash? When can well, we say it turned to cash? Well, I think the whole system. I, I don't think it's one person. I, you know, in fact, <laughs> the guys who get caught are probably uh, arrogant in a sense and, and unfortunate. And, and in my opinion, um, may not have the greatest intelligence. <laughs> But the, 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 it, it, with regard to this, but it, it, I believe the whole system is permeated um, with money. I mean, money, the so United States Supreme Court passes a decision that allows corporations uh, and this United, uh, I can't remember the full name of the case. But Citizens they, United. Citizens United which allows big money to enter any campaign, period. When I was uh, running for office years ago, we used to throw these fundraisers, for example, and it was 25 bucks because we wanted people there. We wanted a lot of people. Now people run uh, fundraisers and you want five or six people, they're giving you 2,000 each. I mean, that, and so the money becomes very important in all of this. The legislature is looking at the fact that right now legislators hold um, their fundraisers during the session. So there's a bill in there saying you can't do that because it pressures lobbyists to give you money and change your votes and all of that. And uh, and uh, <laughs> and that's great. Except you know all they have to do is uh, in their caucus say we're not going to do this anymore. You don't need a law. You just need people to start behaving themselves. And not That's true. Them it's like leadership, that. isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It is. And, and, and you know, they ought to have, well, I think, I don't think anybody ought to hold a fundraiser out of their district. The only reason, the, the originally, the reason for holding a fundraiser during the session, and it all begins very benignly, you know, was because neighbor island legislators went home after the session. So they needed to hold a fundraiser and it grew and everybody noticed that that's a good time to hold it because everybody wants your vote, you know? And so it grows. So I, you know, maybe they, they shouldn't do it during the session. I don't think we should help, but maybe also they shouldn't do it anywhere else, but in their districts. Uh, yeah, yeah right. there, there are all these reforms. The other systemat systematic thing, and, and you know, back in my time, uh, what we proposed actually was public finance. People, people talk about the influence of money in our political system. And yet, if you bring up the idea of publicly financing uh, elections so that everybody's equal and nobody needs to go and ask for a contribution from anybody. Um, you, know, you get a lot of resistance ready. on that. There was always yeah. a lot of resistance on that. You know, because somehow you're giving money to politicians. But actually, 
there was one election, and I remember this a long time ago. I think it was in 1976. I it was, I think, it was the first election that I actually was a campaign manager for, and we had expenditure ceilings, and you could only spend up to ten thousand dollars. Absolutely, it didn't matter whether you took public financing or anything. You could only spend up to ten thousand dollars, and it equalized the race. If we were looking at new blood coming in, and because right now, obviously, incumbents have a tremendous advantage because they get all the money. You can throw the they throw the fundraiser, but if you had public financing or if you had a contribution limit, well, as usual, just like uh, Citizens United, the Supreme Court looked at this and said, no, you can't have that. And so we no longer have contribution limits. That was the worst today. decision in the century, in maybe a century and a half. That was a terrible, terrible decision. And it was visible at the time they handed that one down that it would wreck um, the political system and the democracy. And it is doing that right on course. But well, let, me, you know, let me go to a question I mentioned during the break and I would like you know, to ask you. And that is, um, and what's the connection here? Because we have seen Congress um, go corrupt. Congress has been corrupt and they haven't paid a penalty. I remember in uh, Michael Moore's film, Sicko, remember that was about the healthcare yeah, system absolutely, absolutely. 20 years ago. And he, and he pointed out that a lot of these guys who were on the health committees in Congress would get these really sweet jobs from the health agencies immediately after their term was up, if not before. And they would have all these uh, fantastic multi hundred thousand dollar jobs out of the same companies that were that they were ruling on in their legislative um, you know, uh, function while they were in office. And it was really filthy. And he named names in that movie. He told you who was getting these jobs. See, and, we're, know, gonna put, we're gonna put somebody in jail because they took five thousand dollars, and if I read the um, the read the uh, the news reports correctly, because they needed to pay a mortgage, and then we are we are going to actually make legal the idea that if you're in Congress or in the state legislature for that matter, or any place else, and you get you vote for something, and the the, uh, the company pays you $100,000, that's legal. You know, there used to be, I, when I was in law school, there used to be a sign on Lindsay, my professor Lindsay Kang's wall. And it said, you know, if you steal a loaf of bread, you are a thief. If you steal a, a kingdom, you're a king. And, <laughs> and that's the system. I mean, that's the kind of, when the, the source of corruption is much bigger than somebody sneaking a few dollars in stupidity. You That's know? why there has to be prosecution. That's why there has to be well, there needs stiff to be sentences. Some... That's why there has to be ethics commissions. That's why there should be a rule, whether it's an ethics rule or a, or a statute, um, that you, you, know, you can't have a fundraiser during the session. I have observed, I don't know if you ever saw this uh, in the same way, but I have observed situations where um, these um, companies would come to town. They wanted something from Hawaii. They'd come to town in the middle of the session. Um, and lo and behold, and they, and they would go to fundraisers. Uh, and lo and behold, they would have what they wanted. They were here during the session, and they gave contributions during the session. And then they and left they again. Well, see, I think that uh, we ought to look at the whole financial system. I mean, first of all, if we are really serious about removing the influence of money from our political system, then we ought to seriously go back and look at equalizing uh, financing of elections so that people don't have to go out and get uh, money. Um, and then I, this is going to be very controversial. I think we ought to pay our politicians what we want them to be. In other words, if we want people to be outstanding leaders, then we ought to give them uh, the, the basis to live like that. You know, there's this sort of myth that uh, we are all going to be the farmer that goes uh, off his field, serves one term in the legislature, and, and then goes back and plants corn. And it doesn't work like that. I mean, these guys have families they're going to do. So the whole 
systematic. Uh, we need what do you think of term effort. term limits, John? Well, the problem with term limits is what I saw in California, which is what you just described. You know, I I, I had the privilege of actually lobbying in, in Sacramento, and where they have strict term limits. And what was happening was legislators were just flipping. I serve one term in the House, and then I go one term in the Senate, or I got I got uh, two terms uh, two terms limitation. I look at the healthcare company and I carry their water for four years, and I come out and I got a sweet job, and and so you know the money was kicking the incumbents out. All it meant was people were looking for more soft landings. Uh, so yeah, maybe we should have term limits, but as long as money is the source of everything, I think. We are, we are a serious problem. We well, have, yeah. yeah, let me let me ask you, um, you know, one more thing. Um, and that is, um, John, so these two guys and, and then Kay Aloha and then in the, in the uh, Corporation Council and uh, in the city. I mean, it just Everybody's seems to getting so sloppy. Yeah. And it's not just that all of a sudden the, the prosecutors are investigating more. I think they've all been investigating for a long time. It's just happened to pop up now. And as you say, they're they're sloppy. I mean, the these legislators and officials are sloppy and they you know it's it, to me it's arrogance. You know, you get yeah. to the point where you get away with stuff, little stuff for so but long. If you make that connection, if you make that logical deduction, um, then aren't we saying that there's more here under the rock? John, do you feel there's more here under the rock and that if the investigations proceed based on, you know, what is public now, maybe somebody wants to make, uh, you know, provide some information to the prosecutors uh, in order to improve his or her own position, that the prosecutors will be able to find much more of this because there is a culture of it. And not only not only the people who actually also did this sort of thing, but the people who knew that it was happening, other officials who knew that it was happening and didn't do anything about it. Well, I, I think it's, that's possible. But, I, you know, on the other hand, um, so much of, of what we would consider unethical or what we would consider, in, in my opinion, uh, just illegal behavior um it's probably not see that's the point the system itself is what would if if somebody wanted to build a sewage plant and hired me as the safety official and paid me the same amount of money for not showing up to work for a month that would be legal See, that's that's the point. I mean, yeah, I mean, you might catch a few more people and, 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 and it's the stupidity. I mean, why do you accuse your own family of stealing your mailbox of all things? And that's where it started. And then you cover it up and you cover it up. And the cover up is always worse than, uh, than yeah, the initial. Isn't that true? And, Let me you know, ask you about solutions that have been suggested. You know, one solution is to have a commission uh, with about 10 people on it, many of whom you know, uh, have stood for uh, democracy and reform, some of whom have been charged with eth ethic, ethical issues in the past, and it, that'd be interesting to put them on a committee like this. That's one possibility. Another possibility, as you say, um, is um, um, no, no fundraising during the session. But what is- Well, that's, is, a, that's a law, but I don't, you know, I mean, how dumb do you think these, these, uh, these uh, lobbyists are? If they really want to influence you, they can give you, they can do it after the session too. You know, so I, I think we need a commission. I think we need to look at the whole system though. And that the people that you get, that get caught, you know, what, what you need, and, and this is the balance. This is the balance. The balance uh, it has, to, has something to do with we want a democracy where people can participate in making the rules and you don't want to create a political system that only somebody who's a millionaire can participate in so i can self-fund my own election 
I mean, how many people can go out and grill themselves alone with the amount of money that it takes to run an election? See, uh, very few. And yet, if we're not careful, that's the system will only favor people like that. I mean, if you're starting off and you're really working hard and doing things, what do we do with the system? I mean, there is, in my opinion, I cannot, if we actually lined up some of these practices, which we allow, I, I can't, there's very little difference between that and um, outright arrogant, stupid corruption. Well, shake it and bake it. At the end of the day, it does sound like, although there'll be some, what do you want to call it, optical changes here, um, that, as you say, the chances are that it will continue. Um, well, I think one thing, if, they, if there are more people, uh, you know, that, that get caught in the web, one, one positive result is we'll probably improve the intelligence quotient of the legislature. But that's another story. <laughs> another story for another show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that note, I'm sorry, uh, Jay, you got to interrogate me uh, today, but um, the time is up. So <laughs> you got one last question. Uh, okay. Um, what, what, what is going to happen here as a result? in this session and the next session, what is gonna happen as a result in terms of the uh, efficacy of the ethics organizations, the uh, state auditor, um, the people running for office? Is, is this gonna be an ongoing plank? In other words, am I gonna see people, for example, running for governor, uh, getting up there and saying, it's part of my platform, I'm gonna stamp out corruption. You know, you see oh. that happening. Is, is, is this gonna be a lingering issue or an, an issue that just dries up and goes away? Well, you know, the, the thing <laughs> in Hawaii, it'll become an issue because everybody wants to be on the side of the angels. You know, you, you just do. <laughs> and, and you don't wanna get any close, you don't wanna get anywhere where there's any smell. But you know, we talk about this because it's important to us and it's saddening to see this happening in our state. But as you mentioned, I think the entire nation, I mean, look at what's happening in Washington. I mean, this is just insane. I mean, we, we came out of an era with a president who regularly broke the law. Now he didn't have to go and get a $5,000 bribe from somebody, but he did figure out how to not pay taxes for example, and, and all of this type of stuff. And, and it goes all the way down. And if you got enough money and you know how to work it, fine. You know, it's all become um, legal. So if you, you know, you got a Supreme Court who says you can, you can influence elections in a certain way, blah, blah, blah. The guy that will get caught is the guy who can't pay his mortgage on the bottom of the chain. And that probably will happen in Hawaii. Uh, you know, unless we start to actually offer sim uh, systematic changes. Otherwise, yeah, you know, no fundraisers doing the session. If they really get bold, no fundraisers anywhere but in your district. If they really get bold, maybe they'll talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, no employment. Well, you're uh, uh, outside employment, and then we got to deal with the issue that that comes with the idea that you got to pay these legislators a little bit more. But you know, and I think that's a very profound point, and it reminds me of what goes on in Singapore. In Singapore, they pay legislators uh, enormous salaries, hundreds of thousands. Um, and as you say, it's because they want to trust them. So they're giving them a salary commensurate with what they expect. And you also get better people. I mean, you suppose you get people who are, you know, who hopefully better people in terms of uh, everything. You know, it, it just it just not doesn't have somebody with money or somebody who is uh, actually working for money, you know, who, uh, for another uh, money source. So yeah, we'll see. But what will probably happen is we'll have a lot of rhetoric and everything will blow over. 
and uh, we'll see, you know, what the real thing that's going to be interesting is not what happens this session or even next session or next election is what the conversation is going to be uh, five years out, whether we even care or whether that just disappears from our psyche. See, I would, I would say it will, it will disappear, but the problem will not go away. Um, and the conversation has to continue. And I think one of the things that you and I and think tech can do is, is make sure the conversation does continue. This is a sacred cow. People don't want to talk about it, but we should. Oh, absolutely. So with that, I am going to thank you so much for being uh, sharing this program with me. I, I, I actually wish I, sh I, I should have asked the Tic Tac for another half an hour, but unfortunately I, I didn't. So <laughs> we are going to say aloha at this moment. So thank you very much, Jay. Thank you, John. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>